Hello everyone, this is Tony. Welcome back to Alsace Wine Journey. Today I'm doing another tasting in the Alsace Millisem 2023 Digital Tasting Series. And today I'm focusing on the wines of Agath Burson. Agath is a, I was going to say up and coming, but she's actually an arrived uh, young winemaker. The new kind of age of winemakers in Alsace that everyone's very excited about. So she took over the family estate in 2000 and her um, a vineyard is very small, only seven hectares. So very limited production of uh, wines. She is located in the village of West Halton, about 15 kilometers f south of Colmar. Um, and she has some Grand Cru vine uh, vineyards in uh, Zinkofu, and uh, that's about uh, 1.3 hectares of that. Um, she has some of the highest um, altitude vineyards in Alsace and uh, southern exposure, which is always good for the sun. Um, she probably makes some of the best Sylvaner in um, Alsace region. Let's get to her wines. So the first one is going to be from the region of Bolenberg, and uh, it is um, the tasting is a 2021 Riesling. And the tasting notes on this is fruity nose with notes of grapefruit and orange blossom and zest, crunchy attack, freshness, and nice volume in the mouth. Um, only a thousand bottles of this is made. So um, it's kind of, these are very limited production wines. So on the smell, very fresh, a citrusy type of notes to it. Um, not as sweet and as acidic as on the nose as a lot of uh, Al Alsace Rieslings. And definitely more minerally, what we're used to in BC. Um, yeah, minerally, salty with a little bit of grapefruit. Nice balance, actually. The grapefruit comes at the end of this wine. Um, very nice example of Riesling, actually. Um, really nice acidity and body. A good balance. I really like this. I'm going to go with 88 points on this wine, but really a nice start to this tasting. So next wine is another Riesling. So this is from the Grand Cru Vineyard of Zinkopfu. Um, this is the 2021 vintage. And it says the tasting note is structured wine that opens with notes of lemon thyme, lemongrass, and fresh verbena. Uh, the wine is dense, volu voluminous, and saline. And 1,600 bottles of this is produced. So on the smell, it's, it is much more lemony. I don't get as much mineraliness and a little bit of white flowers on this. So a little bit sweeter, but definitely a difference from the last um, Alsace. A little, much more subtle on the aroma. On the Aftertaste, you get a little bit more stoniness, um, a little bit more, yeah, stony and flintiness, and uh, the citrusy elements come out a lot more, um, like almost like a peel. Um, I think it's a heavier wine, but in terms of a drinking wine, I actually think the first wine is a little bit easier to drink. This is a little bit more serious wine. Um, I'm going to go again with, I'm going to go with 89 points on this wine. Although the first wine was much more pleasing in terms of the drinking wine. I think this is a better aging wine and a better wine with food. Next wine is another Riesling. And this is also from the Grand Cru Vineyard of Zinkopfel. Uh, except this is the Vendage Tardive, so it's a sweet wine. Um, it is the 2020 vintage, which I believe is a hot vintage. It's going to have a lot of uh, intensity of flavors. Um, so the, the tasting note on this is fine and complex nose with notes of candy, lemon fruits, exotic fruit, white flowers on the palate, body and volume, nice balance in the finish and 
there's only 350 bottles of this made. Smell is much like the last wine from uh, Zinkopfel. Um, maybe a little bit more honey, but kind of a lighter, um, kind of white flower aromas. Now I like sweet wine, so that's one thing. Um, and this is what we would consider in uh, BC as like almost a late harvest, a little bit not as sweet as a late harvest. So it's got some residual sweetness, but not really that sweet um, compared to BC um, Rieslings. Having said that, it's got a nice balance to it and um, I really like it in terms of the thickness of the um, on the palate and also the sweetness. It's got a nice honey sweetness, but then and um, at the end it's got that citrusy element to kind of balance it off. So yeah, this is a very easy drinking wine, and I think it's a serious wine in that the aftertaste has enough bite and some citrusy and orange grind elements to kind of make it um, a wine that can pair well with food. Um, I think this and my, my first wine are the favorites. I give this 90, 91 points. The last one we have is actually a Sylvaner. I thought it was gonna be a Pinot, so I'm so excited because she's supposed to be a top producer of Sylvaner in Alsace. The, this is the 2021 from Lutzenthal. And the notes on this is floral nose with fresh grass, nice attack on the palate with a mineral hint on the finish, signature of its limestone terroir. And 1,050 bottles has been made of this wine. Sylvaner is a German type, uh, German Alsace type uh, strand. You don't see it much. You do see it in BC. It was grown in BC, not as much nowadays. Oh. Um, the nose is really neat. It's smoky and flinty and minerally, um, totally different from Riesling, but wow. It's, it's got those heavy aromas of smoke. Wow. That's crazy. I'm going to say this is the best one. This is one I've had Sylvaner before, which has just not been very descript. It's really quite dilute, quite frankly. This has got a great intensity of flavor, good thickness, really thick, um, medium bodied. It's a mouthful. It's really chunky, if you could say that about white wine, but wow. This really shocked me. Yeah, it's got that granity, stony aftertaste, um, floral elements, not a lot of fruit on it. Um, yeah, flintiness, a little bit of um, um, attack of fruit right now, maybe like peaches. Um, not really sweet fruit, but um, wow, I, I'm really shocked by this wine. Um, I'd have to say this is the eye-opening wine of this tasting, and for me, this is 92 points. This is spectacular. In summary, great wines, and I'm so glad I had a chance to taste her Sylvaner. She is reputed to be one of the best producers of Sylvaner in Alsace, and I can see why. If you ever get a chance to get Agath uh, Burson's Sylvaner, go and grab it. It is a remarkable wine. It's, um, I haven't tasted something like that for a long time. So smoky, heavy, um, dry, stony, minerally. Uh, wow, that was uh, shocking to me, actually. The reasons were good. Um, don't get me wrong, 
Um, and I was impressed with even the non-Grand Cru, the first um, wine that she had, which was from um, the place called Bolenberg. I, I was actually very impressed. That's the easiest drinking wine. The other uh, ones from the Grand Cru vintages of Zinkaufel are, I think, more wine lovers' wines, more wine experts' wines, or wine critics' wines, because they're much more uh, technical. But in terms of just drinking pleasure, the first wine I think is wonderful. And the Sylvaner, I, can, I just can't get it out of my mind. That is a wonderful, exceptional wine. If I ever see that on any wine list, I'm definitely buying that. And hopefully we'll have that. If we could ever get this in BC, I, I think it'd fly off the shelves because it's a ridiculously good wine. Um, hope you've enjoyed this tasting. Until next time, happy drinking.